Hey guys, this is Dave from Parts and Restoration. Uh, this is the director's cut of the bullet vise. Boom, we've got some old vices coming down. These are part of my collection. I've actually restored a few of these since the video was shot, but uh, I enjoy these old bolt-on vices. And a handful of bullets. These are 7.62s for my AK-47. Uh, everybody knows bullets plus vice equals bullet vice. Pew, coming at you, and boom, there she is. Little movie magic. Now this, this, this old four inch Wilton vise uh, was found in a antique car shop. Unfortunately, the fellow passed away who owned it and uh, it's really in great shape overall. As you can see, the jaw moves freely in and out. It is pretty greasy. It's covered in a lot of grease, shavings and other dirt just from years of being outdoors. Now this is a 1978 model. It's actually dated 6178. And um, as you can see, uh, overall it's in good shape. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do before I start working on this is take it apart down to its main components. Um, it's mostly large parts. There are a few small parts that, uh, there are two small screws that hold on each of the removable jaws and three small screws that hold on this horseshoe shaped object that, uh, that allows the, in, the jaw to move in and out. You'll see those in a moment. Here they come. Now, oftentimes I'll use a magnetic part holder just so I don't lose my screws. I have many little plastic trays that I use to keep uh, little screws organized, but there's so few parts on here that I just kind of left them out. Now, um, once I take off of this, this U-shaped metal uh, piece, that lead screw for the jaw will be able to come free. This, these jaws are really easy to take apart and work on, um, far easier than a few of the older versions like Chaz Parker's or, or Apprentice Vices that I've worked on in the past. Um, so this dust, this this part here I'm knocking out is called the dust cover. It protects the lead screw from dust and debris from getting inside. Just need a little bit of tap from our piece of rod stock to knock it out. Um, next we're going to remove the nut. Now these nuts were pinned in place um, prior to the painting and, and work on these vices. They are pinned with two pins and then the heads of the pins are ground off and uh, they're painted over. They were very difficult to find because they're very they're flush with the casting. A little bit of persuasion with a with a punch knock those out. Now I just scrape the paint off the head of the other nut, I'm sorry, the other pin to remove it. And all I could see was a real ghostly outline of that pin. A little bit of persuasion again with a punch. I was able to knock them in. Both pins go head to head inside of the barrel there. And the whole nut just pops out because the heads of the pins clear the main body casting. Oh. There's that nut. There's everything together, boom, movie magic, and I've got my table ready for some dirty work. I use, um, I use freezer paper that's backed with poly to protect my table from grease and debris. Now to get all the grease off, I wound up going with paint thinner to get it. It worked best of all the things I tried. I tried acetone, I tried, um, I tried my crud cutter, which is my go-to, but this was just so greasy and nasty that just regular mineral spirits was the way to go. Um, I wound up using regular mineral spirits, not odorless mineral spirits, and my wife about killed me. So I recommend using odorless minerals spirits in the future. Once I went with the paint thinner on everything, I used some crud cutter to get some of the other caked on stuff in addition to using a metal, uh, metal bristle brush. The main actual cleaning and restoring of this vice, getting all the old paint off, was done using my sandblaster. This is a US made barrel bra blaster brand sandblaster, and it worked out great. I hope you enjoyed this musical cutscene here. With, uh, with the Mr. Sandman music. I enjoyed making that. It, got, it gave me a little chuckle. Sandblasters are incredible. If you don't have one and you do a lot of restoration work, uh, start saving your pennies. It's absolutely worth it. It's a huge time saver. Here's my choice shoes for the workshop, flip-flops. I like to be comfortable. Here we go, getting all the sand media out of the sandblasted parts and polishing the metal using a horizontal wire wheel. I have this set up on a dedicated uh, old uh, drill press that this is all I use this for. I was inspired by Hand Tool Rescue. Eric uh, has his setup like this and it works great for polishing and cleaning castings and metal parts. Now the remove the movable jaw on this vise was covered in some globs of old metal from welding um, and I attacked that with a flap disc. Uh, flap discs are fantastic for uh, rapid stock removal and leaving a smooth clean finish. If you use a, uh, a grinding wheel on an angle grinder like this, it leaves kind of a, a, kind of a rough finish. Um, I would say that the flap discs are kind of a nice compromise between a grinding wheel and like sandpaper or something like that. They, they look, leave a nice finish. 
Now we're gonna paint everything. Now before uh, off scene, I prepped all these parts with acetone so there were no oils remaining on the surface prior to priming. And I'm using a self-etching primer from uh, self-etching primer from Rust-Oleum. That's the the ideal priming paint for bare metal. You want that self-etch so it really gets into all the nooks and crannies and kind of seals itself into the casting. So once I finish priming everything, I'm going to be using a Rust-Oleum black hammer finished paint. If you haven't used hammer finished paints before, uh, I'm sure you've seen them if you've worked with old tools or old appliances. Uh, many 50s and 60s era appliances and tools were done in this finish. Um, the Wilton uh, bullet vices were originally painted with a, with a hammer finish. They used silver, kind of like a blue silver. And I just wanted something different. I like black. I wanted to go for a black on white look. And um, as you'll see here shortly, it turned out really nice. Finishing up that base here. I've got to finish my dust cap and my nut. And then I'll be done. Cafe Bustello is life. If you haven't tried it, you should drink it. <laughs> Sharpie makes great oil-based uh, paint pens. Um, I often use a artist's brush and oil-based paints or, uh, to do small work like this. Uh, but I've seen a couple guys recently using these paint pens for uh, doing letters like this and they did a really good job and they looked awesome and it just looked super easy and I got to tell you it was super easy to do the letters on here. They come in a ton of different colors. I got this in a pack with like five or six other different colors and uh, yeah really really tremendous job. The felt on here is really firm so it doesn't you can't like push too far. It's really easy, or it's really easy with artist brushes to get paint on things you don't want to be painted, and I found this uh, worked a lot better than my normal setup. I was working down on my on my bench like this, just had to clear off a section of my bench so I could have a place to work, get nice and close, got good lighting, and uh, it made all the difference. Here we go, taking the mask off of the anvil portion of the vise. Hasn't really been beat too much against over its years of service. Unlike the removable jaws, which I'm going to clean up on the bridge port. The jaws had tons of deep gouges from hacksaws and just from hammering. There were a couple of holes drilled in them just from years of just use and abuse. And I wanted to clean them up. I wound up using a carbide insert indexable two and a half inch face mill. That really did a great job leaving a nice finish. I used the power feed on my table um, for a couple of the passes. And... Um, just did a really tremendous job. You can see some other silly footwear that I occasionally wear in the shop. My cowboy boots were nearby and working on some B-roll. I thought it'd be kind of a funny for a laugh. So there the, uh, there's my Kurt Vice using parallels to get the jaw set just to the right height. And there we go with some stock removal, just taking off a few thou at a time. And uh, wound up leaving a really nice finish on the top. If you don't have a bridge port and you do restoration work, if you can afford one and have the space, it really comes in handy. So now we're putting everything back together. The vices, the vices swivel base is two parts. And uh, we just put the bolts through and attach the nuts on top. The nuts have that built-in handle that allows you to tighten everything down and position it where you want it. Those cleaned up really nice as well. They were really beat up. I think they had a couple deep gouges. Um, I may have done some additional work off camera to those to get the tops clean. I think I filed a few burrs off of them, but they turned out really nice. Uh, next, we're gonna put the main barrel of the removable jaw back in place, slide in our nut and put the pins back on, which happened off camera. It's kind of a pain in the butt, to be honest, and slide that, that removable nut back in place. The lead screws back in. We reinstalled the U-shaped piece that holds the lead screw to the removable, to the movable jaw with those three screws, which I managed to not lose. I, and I used the sandblaster to knock all of the grease and, and garbage out of the, uh, the place for my, the Phillips head. You can see a nice shiny finish on the top of those removable jaws. Now, the sandblaster was, was uh, absolutely essential to clean the cross hatching on these jaw inserts. They were so caked full of grease and dirt and chips and debris from, you know, 40 years of use uh, that it would have taken forever with a with a wire brush or wire wheeling. I don't think it would have all come out. There's that dust cap coming back in place. It cleaned up really nice. I was glad that there was no dents or deformities from my removing it. And that just needed a little bit of uh, extra persuasion to go back in place. And there she is, all complete, looking beautiful. 
that nice black hammer finish on there with the white lettering I think turned out really nice. Once I finished with the lettering, I, I actually used a Rust-Oleum crystal clear enamel to finish everything. I wanted to maintain the shine of that black paint. And uh, as you see, everything moves really smoothly. It's, it's kind of wobbly not being mounted to the desk or mounted to the bench, but yeah, there she is. Turned out really, really cool. You can see I left some of the, the rough marks on those jaws just for fun. Start and finish and uh turned out great thanks for watching guys subscribe to my channel follow me on instagram at parts and restoration see you next time